Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and today I'm going to teach you how to show the difference between ivory and bone. So make sure you stay tuned. Now why do you need to know the difference between ivory and bone? Well, it's not just ivory and bone. You've got ivory and bone, you've got celluloid, you've got bakelite. There's a few different variations that can all look the same. Um, here we have two examples of letter openers. Can you tell which one's ivory, which one's bone just from the picture? Well, you will do in a few minutes. Um, what can I say? The easiest way of identifying ivory from bone will be on visual inspection. And I'll splice in now some close-ups um, while I'm charting. <coughs> this is the bone. This is the ivory. Now the first thing you look for is, if you look at that photograph, um, whichever side I've put it, the bone will have lots of little black pitting or veining. And that is because you, you have blood vessels and things running through the bone. And they'll always leave the black pitting and the black marks. Ivory does not. You'll have with ivory a cross hatching, depending on how it's cut, or grain. But it's always very smooth, very very clean looking compared to bone that's the best way to tell ivory from bone guys it's very easy honestly a minute all you need you don't even need an eyeglass most of it you can see straight away but with an eyeglass um, and I will zoom in so you can see look at the ivory you'll see the cross hatching that's the picture I've just put down there and with the bone again the close-up you'll see all the veining now you've got the problem of celluloids, uh, well, one other test rather, sorry, you, you can do for ivory and bone is you can heat up a hot pin, you touch the ivory, it's not supposed to do anything to the ivory, I've never done this test but I have just read it, uh, however it is supposed to leave a burn mark on bone. So if you want to do that one, it's up to you, but you really don't need to, a simple visual inspection will tell you if it's bone or ivory, it is really that easy guys. Now you've got celluloids and bakelites and that that simulate ivory now the best way to tell them is with a hot pin you can um, still use the visual inspection but it's a lot harder if you don't know what you're looking for because the celluloid or the um, bakelite and that can be so smooth and polished and finished off beautiful that you can't see the uh, the difference between the ivory and those so a hot pin in an inconspicuous space will be absolutely perfect so I'm going to splice in obviously lots of photographs now of the two side by side and some close-ups and some big zoomed in pictures and I'm going to about to go online and show you why it's so important um, to know the difference between the two now I understand it's not PC in a lot of countries now you cannot import ivory and a lot of places are making it illegal to trade in even antique ivory and that is absolutely fine but at the moment it's not illegal where we are to deal in antique ivory so that's what we do it's not politically correct neither is taxidermy neither is a lot of stuff um, this is just one part of the antiques industry that isn't most popular but still has to be looked at so I'm going to show you some pieces now I'll probably go online find some Sotheby's examples and I'll show you just how much money is involved in ivory versus bone I'll see you soon First off, we're going to start off at Sotheby's year. Now, why is ivory so important to keep? It's because it's history. Now, if you look at Sotheby's year, they have got some amazing pieces. This is the Old Masters Sculptors and Works of Art. And look at this one piece made almost three million British pounds. But if you go away with all the antique ivory, I'm not saying it's good to do now, but if you get away with all the antique ivory, you lose a lot of history. There's some beautiful, beautiful pieces of history that will just be lost. You know, 14th century, 12th century casket. Ivory's been used for hundreds and hundreds of years. And to destroy it all now would be 
to be honest with you, a crime. You've got two panels there, French or Paris or German, they've put it, circa 1730 to 1770. So you're talking that, it's like 700 year old. And it's sold, all right, well over half a million pound. Uh, but that's fine. Is it? Yeah. Six to eight thousand there. You know, you can't be binning this type of stuff. Estimate three to five thousand. You put you destroy all this stuff because you don't want antique ivory and to be totally honest though, it's history lost. And what's next? Um But this is just to show you the prices on some of this early pieces. I'm gonna show you more modern ivory as in 18th to 19th century now in just a minute. Anything after 1947, you cannot sell or buy legally. One of the big things you will see on the market these days is chess sets. But um, yeah, ivory is full of history, guys. Here's a few more modernish examples. Now here we have a pair of early to mid 19th century ivory carved figures. Now these are walrus ivory and they're quite exquisite. Look at the detail carved into these. That's just one example and they're, they're online um, for three and a half hundred pounds. You move across and we have a crucifix of or an image of Christ again in ivory so used by the churches they're asking 1600 you know you come across to what is a netsky now a netsky is a toggle that was used if you like carved out of ivory Japanese in rows used them and they should have some nice images close that one, same one there you go, that one's, that's a signed example I'm looking for the front view I am guys there we go, is the front view and they come in all different styles that one's an actually erotic one but just to give you an idea and they are £1,500 each so ivory is a lot of money, but make sure it's pre-1947, whatever you do. Now we're gonna have a little look at the difference in bone. Just a couple of examples, just to give you an idea of the bone. Now, here's my ivory page turner, and this is gonna be at probably 75 to 100 pounds. I've got a couple of these. You come across here, and this is a really nice one. As you can see, it's carved with an alligator here. You can see what I mean about all the bone, the veining in the bone. And they sold that for £25, 26 pence. This is a sold price. Now, it was hard on eBay because there's a lot of people selling ivory on eBay that should be, but uh, that is listed as bone. So I found one that was very easy for distinction. And again, £35 for a carved bone. Now, what you've got to watch is there's a lot of stuff coming out of China. Hang on. I'll start that again. There's a lot of bone and fake ivory and things like that coming out of China. Um, you get it especially in little snuff bottles. Bear with me a second. Have I got any here? I might have one or two. Yeah. These type of bottles anyway guys. And they're coming out and they're portraying to be bone and ivory and things. Um, these ones are Clasone. But they come basically a lot of these type of things, and they're in bone and that, and they're, they're portraying to be early 19th century or you know early b bottles and that. And to be honest though, they're making them out in China now. So be careful what you're buying. Um, get an understanding of what you're buying. Go to auction houses, go wherever, and handle this stuff so that you get a feel for it. Don't buy anything unless you're certain it's pre 1947. One way to tell is quite easy. Let me show you another little paper knife I have here. This is another ivory and solid silver knife I got here. Now, one way of knowing the age of this is quite simply it's hallmarks. Full set of hallmarks. So, it's unquestionably pre 1947. Nobody could argue with me on that. 
that could go into an auction house. So one way, use hallmarks, things like that, because a lot of ivory is mounted in silver and things like that and gold, so you can date it in that sense. But more often than not, ivory is dated off the way it's carved, the shape, the style, and things like that. So it does become difficult then. So that's it, guys. You can see the prices, ivory pulls. It pulls seriously a lot of money. I hope you've enjoyed. Please don't uh, fill my comment box with hate mail because it's a, a subject on ivory. I understand and totally disagree with poaching. Um, what can I say? I'm also a firm believer that you don't destroy history, otherwise you'll end up repeating it. Guys, thank you very much. I really hope you've enjoyed watching the video and I hope I've helped. If you've enjoyed, I would appreciate a like and a share. You'll find me on Facebook, I have a page in the group Antiques Arena. you find me on eBay, Antiques Arena Clearance is my eBay ID. Um, I have my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com or you can come and visit me at my shop. It's Antiques Arena, 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Foxtrot 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.